So going from the word equation to a balanced equation can't be done directly. The first thing we have to go is from the word equation to an unbalanced formula. Now the fancy word for an unbalanced formula is a skeleton formula. What's a skeleton? What's a skeleton? Okay, it's, it, but you know what? It's not the completed final product. This is called a skeleton formula because it's giving you the outline, the structure, but you haven't done the balancing yet. And what do I mean by that? I need to go from, so we want to write the chemical equation that results when we combine <laughs> carbon tetrahydride plus oxygen, and that's going to become water plus carbon dioxide. Okay, first thing. That's the uh, becomes, that's going to be the middle of my equation, Allison, an arrow. On the left side, I'm going to have carbon tetrahydride plus oxygen. On the right side, I'm going to have water plus carbon dioxide, but I need to write these as formulas, and this is why you may or may not need your periodic table. Carbon tetrahydride, how can you glance at that and instantly know it's covalent, not ionic? What's the hint, Duncan? Tetra, okay? Those are only used for covalent, which means I can get the formula right from the actual name. How many carbons are there in the formula? What's in front of the word carbon that's invisible? Mono, which we don't bother writing. So how many carbons are there, Kyle? How many carbons are there? One, I'm gonna go like this, C. Hydride. Which element are we talking about when we talk about hydride? Hydrogen. How many hydrogens are there? There's the first part. Carbon tetrahydride is CH4. By the <laughs> way, that's an explosive. That's uh, methane, I think. I think it's methane. Plus... How would I write oxygen? Yep. O2. Now, I wrote here why O2, even though it just says O. This is where we need to remember those diatomic molecules. And Brooke, we remembered that by, I gave you the name, Mr. Hofbrinkle. I'll do a lowercase l like that. Uh, if you see hydrogen or oxygen or fluorine or bromine or iodine or nitrogen or chlorine by themselves, they always in nature bond with each other to form two of them. So I'll never write N, I'll just write N2. I'll never write O, I'll write O2. In fact, if you ever go work in industry and you're working with oxygen tanks, they often call them O2 tanks. It's labeled right on the tank. becomes, I have more room here, water, hey, I might know this formula. What is water's chemical equation? I can do that one. By the way, H2O, covalent or ionic? Is H a metal? Is hydrogen a metal? Nope, so there's a covalent bond. By the way, the technical name for water is uh, hydrogen dioxide water. Plus carbon dioxide, covalent or ionic? And how do I know? Covalent because of that and also, Duncan, you said because of the tetra, also because this is a non-metal. This is a non-metal. What's the equation? What's the formula for carbon dioxide? CO2. Two. That's step one. This is the skeleton formula. Now, don't write this down. Don't write the down, black part down. Now I'm going to balance it. So I'll erase that, but just to let you know what we're doing. Alex, find the notes, but sh thank you. All right. Tricks of the trade. If oxygen and hydrogen appear all over the place, save them for last because if you're lucky, Jaden, it'll actually balance itself. 
hydrogen and oxygen kind of show up with all sorts of other stuff. But let's list how many of each particular atom we have. On the left, how many C's do I have right now? One. How many H's do I have right now? How many O's do I have right now? Two. On the right, how many C's do I have right now? One. Oh, maybe it's balanced. How many H's do I have right now? Two. Two. How many O's do I have right now? Be very careful. Not two. Do you see it? Right? One in the first and two in the second. Three. All right. Duick says try and save, try and save the uh, hydrogen and oxygen for last. So I would start with carbon. Ah, carbon's already balanced. Okay, let's try, uh, let's try hydrogen maybe? How many hydrogens do I have on the left hand side? Four. How many on the right hand side? Is there any way I can turn that two into a four? So I'm going to cross out the two, make it a four. Now how am I going to change it into a four? With a coefficient, I'll put a two right there because two times two is four. Except that changes something else. What else has that changed? Oxygens. How many oxygens do I now have on the right-hand side? Do you see it? Two, four. So let's cross out the three and make that a four. Carbon balances? Check. Hydrogen balances? Check. Oxygen, ba ah! How many oxygens do I have on the right? Four. How many do I have on the left? Two. Can I change that into a four? Please, God. Easily. Put a two there. So this is, on your test, what I would look for as the balanced chemical equation it turns out if you want to combine carbon tetrahydride and oxygen and end up with water and carbon dioxide, you need one carbon tetrahydride, you need two O2 molecules for oxygens, and you'll end up with two water molecules exactly and one carbon dioxide molecule exactly. You don't realize how powerful what we're doing actually is. Time, we're predicting the future. We're actually able to now start predicting how chemicals will combine. If it gets more complicated than this in industry, but if you're wondering, Alex, how they make funky new chemicals and things, it starts here. Next one. Iron plus bromide becomes iron three bromide. Okay. becomes. Oh, Julie, other ways they can write that results in, or gives, or yields, or uh, turns into, but, so look for words like that. I'll usually use the word becomes. On the left hand side we have uh, iron. Hello? Iron. F-E? Plus bromide, Br would be wrong, okay, Br2 because bromide is part of that Mr. Hofbrinkel, it exists in nature as a diatomic molecule, becomes, by the way, looking at this, can you tell me two ways I know that that's ionic? Iron is a metal, okay. What else? I'm not sure what this means. Eyed, although we also use eyed, Rachel, for some covalence, so I can't quite fall back on that. There's a third thing here, Roman numerals. 
Okay. Now, here's the nice thing. That Roman numeral is telling me the charge on ion. And I'm going to have to now, I can get the crisscross formula from the covalent easily because the tetra and the mono and the di and the penta tell me how many of each. Psst, if it becomes a distraction, I'm going to have you take them off. So I need you to learn. Okay. Thank you. I know you're feeling older and, you know, puberty and all that. Good for you. But here we go. Ready? Iron, I have to do this off in the margin, write this down. Off in the margin, I'm going to write Fe, and I'm going to write Br. I need to figure out actually how they combine as a formula. This is where we're going to use the crisscross rule. What's the charge on bromide from your periodic table? Negative. What's the charge on iron? Iron. Problem. Iron is multivalent. Ah. Which charge do they want me to use? How do you know it's not the two? Which charge do they want me to use, Alex? That's what the Roman numeral tells us. Okay? So I'm going to put a 3 plus there. So my skeleton equation for iron plus bromide becomes iron 3 bromide. What am I going to write on this side here? What am I going to write? Fe1. Am I going to write the 1? No. Br3. The problem is, if you can't get to that part, Sage, then you can't actually balance the equation because you've started out with the wrong equation. So this is putting everything together. Now, let's balance. How many irons do I have on the left-hand side? How many BRs do I have on the left-hand side? Two. How many irons do I have on the right-hand side? One. How many BRs do I have on the right-hand side? Three. You okay with that, Ty? Iron is already balanced. Great. How many BRs on the left, Ty? No, no. How many, just from what I've written, how many BRs are there on the left-hand side? I think you're right in here. Sorry? Two. Two. How many on the right? Three. What can I turn those into? I need a number they both, yes, okay, this is the trick. Uh, you know what, maybe I can turn them both into a six. I would not want to try and turn them into a nine. I can do the three, but not the two very easily. So I think I can turn them both into a six. How, what would I multiply BR by to change it into a six? What would I multiply the BR on the right by to change it into a six? And I'll use coefficients. So if I hear you correctly, Ty, I'm gonna do this. Three. Did that change anything else on the left-hand side? Nope, because it's just BR by itself. Six. What did you say I was going to multiply the BR by on the right-hand side, Ty? I'll put a two there. That makes that a six. Did that change anything else? Yes, it did. I now have two of those. Are we balanced? Not yet. OK. How? Oh, you're saying if I put a 2 there, this is now balanced. If you want to, in a lab, combine iron and bromide, technically bromine before you could, but bromide, and you want to end up with iron 3 bromide and have nothing left over, you need two iron molecules, two iron atoms. You need three Br2 molecules, six bromines and you'll end up with two molecules of iron 3 bromide. This is tough, but I'm trying to go Julie really systematic. And if you're finding this tough, again, congratulations, you're normal. Alex, you alive? I, I'm very alive. Other Alex, you're alive? Okay. You know, I got two, Alex, two Alexes in this class, so we'll have Alex the greater and Alex the lesser. Okay, here we go. Alex the Lesser, you awake? Okay. Next page over. Okay. I think for you guys it's the page across, is that right? 
<sighs> Holy smokes. Let's kick it up a notch. This is, this is approaching, Matt, the tougher level of difficulty. You awake, Matt? Because I see this and I see the eyes closed and I, you know what? I can't, I can't accept that. You ready, Matt? You know what? How about we do an arrow for the word becomes? Okay. What do you think, folks? That one there, covalent or ionic? The tin bracket IV close bracket nitrite. Ionic, ionic yuckier. I'm going to have to go off in the margin and crisscross. What about this one here, covalent or ionic? Ionic. Ugh. <coughs> ionic, ionic. So I'm going to have to crisscross to get the formulas. And then, Brooke, once I crisscross to get the formulas, then I'll have the skeleton equation. Then I'll balance it to get the full chemically balanced equation. Holy smokes. OK. Ready, Matt? What's the symbol for tin? For, I, it's, uh, it begins with an S. I know that. S -N. Oh, SN? Tin, multivalent or not? Yes. Go find it. OK. Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Alex, the greater, my friend, they told me which charge they want me to use. Which charge do they want me to use on tin? Four. So I'm going to go SN4. By the way, you'll notice I'm doing this above or in the margin. I haven't, I'm not doing this in my actual equation yet. Nitrite. Now, did they say nitride or did they say nitrite? Oh, nitrite? Flip the page over on your periodic table. It's polyatomic. <gasps> NO2 charge. NO2 negative. And oh, whoever said, oh, no. Yeah. Crisscross. Boom. Boom. It looks like the first part of my equation is going to be SN bracket NO2, four of them. You okay with that, Courtney? Didn't say this was simple. And if I, if, by the way, if it seems like I'm going slow, I'm going very <laughs> meticulously. I can't do these in my head. No, it's going to be doable. We just got to go systematically. No, you'll survive. Hey, Matt, what's the next one in the front? You know what? We got two mats, don't we? Well, maybe we'll come up with something for that. Meanwhile, Matt, front row. What's the second ingredient, reactant? No, no, no. Not becomes the second ingredient. This guy, we're still in the, re okay, we're still in the reactants. Potassium. Want to hear a joke about potassium? OK. And I know it's K plus. I've memorized that one. Phosphate. Did they say phosphide? No, this is also polyatomic. Of course. PO4 with three negatives? OK. When I crisscross. What am I going to write as a formula for potassium phosphate? K what? PO4 what? K, three of them. PO4, how many of them? One, you know what? Then you don't need to put the brackets there. But if you want to, you certainly can to remind yourself that they're a polyatomic <laughs> ion. Becomes. <sighs> Potassium nitrite. Potassium K. Nitrite. Oh, K plus and NO2 negative. Crisscross. Oh, this one's not a bad crisscross, Tyra. I get one and one. 
Thank God. K N O two. And tin which four. So I'll do that. And phosphate. Now phosphate was P O four three negative. I think I might have mentioned at the beginning of this lesson, this is as tough as it gets all year. Yeah. I get SN3 PO4 4. Now this is both uglier and not quite as ugly as it looks because I'm going to give you a good trick. By, by the way, that being able to find the formula, we did a quiz on that where I gave you a bunch of chemicals, polyatomic. I said, uh, find the names, crisscross, and all that. So as far as I'm concerned, Connor, that's fair game. I hope, hope, hope. Connor or Conlon? Sorry, caught myself partway through. All righty. How many SNs, how many tins on the left-hand side? Cameron, how many tins on the left-hand side? How many tins right here, Cameron, my friend? Four. Four? Is he right? Why? How, and I'm, by the way, I'm glad you made that mistake because it's a common one. What number? Whoop! Don't erase, Mr. Duick. What number is sitting right there next to the tin invisibly? So let's put uh, that equals one. Now, here's the first trick I'm going to give you. With a polyatomic ion, we're going to treat that as one funky atom. In other words, don't write this down, don't write this down, do not write this down. I'm not going to say, oh, there's four N's and there's uh, eight O's. I'm going to say, how many NO2's are there? Four of them. I'm going to treat it like one funky atom. Do it in blue, Mr. Duick, so your color is consistent. Jasmine, my joy, how many Ks are there? Potassiums is three, with authority in your voice and confidence in your heart, absolutely. And I'm going to do the same trick for the PO4. Joseph, I'm going to treat it like one funky atom. How many PO4s are there? Ah, and again, I'm glad you made that mistake. Did you hear him? Four, no, one outside the bracket. One. One. And by the way, this is also why this is tough, because if you count that wrong, now your whole equation, Jaden, is going to be impossible to balance and be wonky. Let's keep going. <sighs> Over on the right-hand side, Andrea, my joy, what number is sitting right here? It's invisible. How many Ks are there on? Actually, you know what? Let's do the SNs first. Let's be in order, okay? So SNs, how many SNs on the right-hand side, my joy? Three. Let's write that down with a smile in our heart. By the way, as I'm writing these, I start to plan. And part of my strategy, Sage, I have a feeling I got one SN on the left, three on the right. I'm already thinking maybe multiply by three, maybe. Uh, the next thing I wrote was the NO2s. Hey, Sage, how many NO2s are there on the right-hand side? One, you say, with authority in your voice. You would be right. The next thing I wrote was the Ks. You want to hear a joke about potassium? Okay. Um, want to hear a joke about sodium? Nah. I'll never get tired of it ever. Okay, anyways. Hey, Dylan, how many Ks are there on the right-hand side? Thank you. A lot of, not the two, not out there. One. Good. <sighs> oh, and the last thing is PO4s. Is it 16 or is it 4? How many PO4s are there? 4. All righty. We haven't even started yet. 
okay? And by the way, I'm not gonna give you 10 of these on your test, but I'll probably give you like five, sorry, okay? Good news is, Joseph, on the provincial, I think there's like two on the multiple choice. And it's multiple choice, so you can usually use the process of elimination. But again, my goal is find the quizzes and homework tough, tests easier, provincial easiest. So I'm gonna whomp you during the year. Are you ready? Hey, what do you want to start out with? Give me a suggestion. NO2. NO2? NO2? Okay. I don't know if I would have started with that, but maybe. There's four on the left, Rachel. How many on the right? How many? Oh, you know what? I can turn a one into a four. How? Times it by? Thank you, Captain Obvious. So let's put a four here. I guess that's going to put a... F oh, change colors, Mr. Duick. Click. Click. Do this. I'm trying to do my changes in red. So put a four there, and Rachel, you're saying put a four there? Oh, which also changes uh, that, four of them. Okay. Suggestions. Twelve? What twelve where what? What which which element are you looking at right now? <coughs> oh potassium? You're saying I can get twelve of them? Okay, let's see what that does. So you're saying uh, times this side by what? Are you saying four how do you say it? Four? Four is right. We try to get with four. Oh, that's also gonna change the few how many few how many PO fours are there now then as well? Also, four, and that gives me, oh, you said times by four, so don't put a four there, Mr. Duick. We're timesing by four because you said you want 12 of them, right? And you're going to do that on this, oh, so you're going to times this by what? So instead of a four in front, let's put a 12 in front. Oh, which means, you know what? I got... 12 of those. I just had a nerd moment because I think it's going to work. Do you remember I said, Sage, I'm already thinking I might multiply some things by three? And how many NO4s did I just end up with Matt's brain move? 12. How many do I have on this side? Four. Did I say I was hopefully going to be multiplying some stuff by three? You know what? I think this is going to work because I'm seeing a 12 popping out of there eventually as well. In fact, let's try tackling these NO2s. How many do I have on the left? How many do I have on the right? Times the left by. So if I do that, I'm going to put a 3 here. That gives me 12. Oh, that gives me 3. Holy smokes. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Everybody put your hand, pens down. Everybody go like, yeah. come on, touchdown. We did that. I think uh, one more and we're done. And then, I'm sorry, the only way I know to get good at this, Alex the Lesser, is to practice, 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 practice. Okay. By the way, which is easier to get the equation for? Which is easier to get the, hang on, I gotta pause for a second here. I was asking, uh, which are easier, ionic or covalent? Julie, I find the covalent way easier to get the formula for, because I can get the numbers, the subscripts, right from the tetra, penta, mono, tri. I find ionic way tougher. I have to crisscross carefully. So, last one. Ionic or covalent, this last one. And how do you know? Covalent? Convince me. There's two ways you can convince me. Okay, the dye and hexa. That's and also carbon, metal or non-metal. I have non-metal, non-metal, covalent. Okay. I think that's going to mean these are going to be easier 
formulas to come up with. Doesn't necessarily mean the equation at the end is easier to balance, but at least the formulas are a little easier. Mm -hmm. Take 30 seconds, see if you can come up with the skeleton equation on your own. I'm gonna freeze the screen. If you get stuck, have patience, but see if you can come up with the skeleton equation from your periodic table and from the di, hexa, uh, carbon, di, all that stuff on your own. Almost done, Julie, but sit up. Ah! No, nothing? Oh, my aim was up. I got Tyra right between the eyes. I got her. Jeez, jeez. Good news is people watching on YouTube just got to jump, especially in their headphones. It's all good. Why? You awake now? Wait for it. Got your Wait, you got adrenaline rush now, huh? I got this. I got... Uh, C2 dicarbon, H6, uh, six hydrides, plus, oh, oxygen is part of Mr. Hofbrinkel, so O2 results in, gives. Carbon dioxide, I actually know that one. Psst, Jasmine. Thanks, kiddo. Oh, and water, H2O. Now, let's balance. Let's balance. Uh, how many carbons on the left-hand side? Uh, by, by the way, yeah. I should tell you, often the easier the equation looks, the tougher it is to balance because there's less to work with. Even though this guy looked ugly, as soon as Matt suggested that 12, I knew it was going to fall apart because there was so, many, so much stuff to work with. So I'm already a little nervous about this one, but let's see. Um, two. H's, I got six. O's, I got two. C's on the right, I got one. H's, I got two. O's, I got three. Okay. Okay. Well, let's try doing the carbon first. How many carbons on the left? Two. How many on the right? I can fix that. Two, put a two there, and that now gives me five oxygens on the right-hand side. Four in the first molecule, one in the second molecule. Okay. What else might I try? Hydrogens, how many on the left? How many on the right? Two. I'm going to hope the oxygens take care of themselves because that two and that five is going to be a bit yucky. If I have to, I'll deal with it. But for now, I might say, let's try multiplying the hydrogens by three. That gives me, sorry, six there. But that changes, okay, how many oxygens do I have now on the right-hand side? How many? You're right. Seven. Seven. Put your pencils down. I'm going to show you a trick that works. Look up. Here's the problem, Sage. How many oxygens on the left-hand side, Sage? How many on the right? Can I turn a two into a seven? I can, sort of. What would you multiply a two by to change it into a seven? It's going to be a decimal. Jessica. Okay. Temporarily, I'm going to go like this. Here's the problem. Oh, uh, that would give me uh, seven. Here's the problem. Can I have half an oxygen molecule? So the trick is, if you ever have to multiply by a decimal, once you're done, because now it is technically balanced, but I can't have that half decimal, times 
every coefficient by two. Watch. Times by two, times by two, times by two, times by two. That's now balanced without decimals. So you can write that down now if you want to. There's the trick. If on the very, very last one, Jaden, I'm stuck with a decimal, well, I'll multiply it by 5.5. .5. Okay, put the 5.5 .5 in there temporarily if it's your, save it for last. Put the 5.5 .5 in there temporarily, and then you can get rid of the de decimal by timesing everything, everything, everything by two. The balanced equation is two C2H6s plus seven O2s gives four CO2s plus six H2Os. And if you re-add up all of the hydrogens left and right, all of the carbons left and right, all of the oxygens left and right, you'll find they do balance. We can do it really, really quickly right now. I got four carbons. I got four carbons. I got 12 hydrogens. I got 12 hydrogens. I got 14 O's. I got eight plus six 14 O's. That's one of my Courtney last resort tricks, but that, which is why I try and save stuff for last, but works. What's your homework? Okay. I think we might have done page 211 already. Just give me one second here. I think that was part of the... Do on a separate, can you stop that for a second, Matt? Piece of paper. Mr. Duick, do we have to copy out the equation? Uh, well, you're going to find you have to write out the skeleton equation to balance it anyways. If you don't feel like writing out the word equation, if you want to, as part of your homework, just go write the formula and the skeleton, I won't freak out about that. But this is important, folks, because it's possible to do this completely wrong. Uh, that first part, if you're trying to budget for homework, you want to see if you can get done in the next half hour. I'm also going to give you a section 4.3 homework. I'll give you a little bit of time to work on section 4.3 homework next class as well, but you can certainly get a head start on it too. So do the textbook assignment first. Okay, check your answers in the back. And then this has a whole bunch of practice for this as well. I'm going to give you some time to work on it. This is a good assignment. The only thing is I can't balance an equation in that little space. So you may want a scrap piece of paper that you attach to this where you list how many hydrogens, how many fluorides, and do the balancing. Or you may reach the point, shh, you may reach the point where you can start to do some of these in your head. If you can, more power to you. But I'm telling you, number 10 is probably going to be pretty ugly. And I'm telling you, some of these last three are going to be ugly. So here's balancing from formula. Then there's balancing from word equations, 12 of them. And I'll give you time next class to work on this. Then this is putting everything together, writing a word equation, writing a balanced equation. I can't do it in this little space. Again, if you want to show your work on a scrap piece of paper and just staple it to the back, go ahead. And then the usual, some multiple choice questions. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we're technically done chapter four. All we're going to be doing for the next few days is review and practice and practice and practice.